Exterior forbidden forest before sunrise. The forbidden forest is dark in the deep blue of pre-dawn light. Nothing stirs. Then, cracking, shuffling. Birds caw as their sleep is disturbed. A black boot crunches into the leaves. Mulsiver, hidden behind his ornate mask. Death Eaters also masked crowd behind him, full of deadly purpose. Spread out. The Death Eaters fan out. One of them steps over a fallen branch and a caterwauling charm goes off. Are you bloody joking? Suddenly, flashes of light pelt Death Eaters. Flickers of movement and curses fly from the shadows. Molster Sr. whips his wand over the Death Eaters. A massive shield charm appears, stopping the grunt of the surprise attack. Get Tull Hall to the castle. Any means necessary. The Death Eaters circle around him as the attack against the shield charm worth it. It flickers, then fails. A moment of brief quiet. Exterior, Forbidden Forest, Before Sunrise. The battle has begun. The order surrounds the Death Eaters, trying to get to the well-protected knot in the middle in Mulsiver. Moody, in the thick of things, barks orders. Flank them! Let no one pass you! The Marauders fight ferociously for the center. Sirius already bleeds from a shallow cut on his forehead. James calls a tripping Peter to his feet, firing a spell simultaneously. He hits a Death Eater square in the face. He falls to the ground, groaning in pain. Nice one, James. Incarcerous! The spell binds the Death Eater with ropes. Anna and Edgar fight back to back. A spell hurtles towards Edgar's head. Anna blocks it with a swift shield charm. Edgar rolls around a beat too late, gives her a quick nod. Bellatrix, in the thick of the Death Eaters, watches the back of Mulsiver's head with a predator's intent. A spell shoots past her, narrowly missing. She whips around to spot Emmeline, dodging curses nimbly. Thoughts of Mulsiver gone, she dives into the fray. Moody fires a spell of his own, blowing three Death Eaters off their feet. He turns, and Minerva McGonagall dashes up, out of breath. The Marauders race past. Remus catches sight of her. Uh, nice to see you, Professor. You're late. Do you know how long it takes to run from the castle to here? She fires a spell at Death Eater. He turns into a pumpkin. Where's Dumbledore? We need uh, reinforcements! Protecting the school's armor patterns! Oh, that's nice! Uh, expendable, are we? The Death Eater fires a killing curse at the brothers. They both duck. In perfect tandem, Gideon pops up while Fabian kneels. They each take down a Death Eater. Emmeline spots Anna with Edgar and starts to struggle towards her. But before she makes it more than a few steps, a curse of the the tree behind her. Emmeline whirls, casting a shield charm just as Bellatrix bears down on her. They trade blows. Emmeline casting everything she's got. Bellatrix laughs as she deflects. Bellatrix, Queen Bellatrix, likes to play with her food. Gwen fights the center of the Death Eaters, eyes on Mulsiver. Suddenly, her wand flies from her hand. A masked Death Eater faces her. Surrender. I won't kill a pure blood if I can pass you. Gwen smiles a tight lipped smile and charges her bastion in a full spot. He crashes into the ground. Her shoulder plows into him before he can react. Gwen spins around. Her wand is just a few feet away. Her bastion struggles to his knees. Gwen roundhouse kicks him across the shoulders. He slams hard into the dirt and stays down. 
Mulsford's voice rises above the din, unseen. Dolahov, go! Gwen looks up from a bastion just as a masked Death Eater breaks away from the pack and sprints to the trees. Moody, he's heading for Hogwarts! But Moody is too busy dueling with another Death Eater. Gwen takes off, Gideon and Fabian hot on her heels. She scoops up her wand from the grass as she runs. Lily surges up to stop Dolahov, but he casts a reductor curse out in front of him. The ground explodes as Lily is tossed back. She lands hard. Dolahov runs right past her. Gwen races after him, sparing just a glance to make sure Lily's okay before leaving the battle behind. It's just her and Dolahov now, dodging through the trees. He drops his cloak, moving more nimbly through the edge of the forest. He casts a curse, aiming to kill. Gwen and the brutes scatter. Gwen casts a curse back. It hits the edge of Dolahov's mask, knocking it off, revealing a scarred face. Dolahov breaks free of the trees, and for the first time, Hogwarts appears. Dark in the early morning, no windows lit, no one waiting to stop his approach. Gwen fires at his back, but it misses. Dolahov shoots another spell back to Gwen. It passes her, hitting the ground. A massive snake of fire roars up, engaging the Pruitts. Gwen glances back. We've got this. Gideon and Fabian attack the snake, moving in sync as Gwen continues after Dolahov. He reaches the crest of the hill and a bright blue light flares, illuminating the silhouette of a man in billowing robes at the crest of the hill. The light emanates from his wand. A massive barrier flickers to life around Hogwarts, a bubble rising to enclose the castle. Dumbledore. Dolahov skids to a halt just shy of the barrier. Gwen shoots a curse that just misses. He whirls around. Accio Hexagon! Dolahov raises his wand. Her spell is repelled by his shield charm. The two begin dueling, exchanging spells in a flurry of movement. Too quick to track, but it's obvious Dolahov has the upper hand. Dolahov slashes at Gwen, a cut appearing down the side of her cheek. At the base of the hill, the snake lunges at Fabian, scorching his clothes as he rolls out of the way. Gwen fires a spell at Dolahov. He blocks, but before he can retaliate, she moves in close, grabbing his wand arm and forcing it at the sky. With a leg sweep, she takes Dolahov down to the ground and elbows him across the face. She grabs the satchel and rolls away for him. He lunges for his wand, but she fires a curse that obliterates it into splinters. The snake vanishes in smoke, leaving a scorched Gideon and Fabian on the burnt grass. Dolahov gets to his feet, just as Gideon and Fabian dash up. Gwen points her wand right at his head. Surrender! But Dolahov simply smiles, memorizing each of their faces, and presses his wand to the face of an elaborate watch on his wrist. It no! She fires another curse at Dolahov, too late. He vanishes, pulled away by an activated port key. Did you get it? Gwen opens the satchel, lifts out Morgana's heptagon. Look. He points towards the forest, where a plume of red sparks has appeared. The marauders fight, separated from each other by a degree, each individually in their own ghoul. Death Eater approaches. Lily dives to the ground for cover nearby, casting her most impressive protective spell yet. It gives James, Rima, Sirius, and Peter enough time to regroup, stand together defensively instead of being spread too thin over the battlefield. They move in tandem. James and Sirius each bounce the curse back at their respective casters and share a brief look of self-congratulations. Rima shoves them aside to avoid being hit by another spell. Peter ducks from a spell, eyes to the ground, and not towards the bigger threat. Sirius pulls him away from a bright green blast. Lily's helped to her feet by Marlene and Dorcas. The three friends move as one, ducking and weaving and protecting each other. A wayward curse hits Marlene in the arm, knocking her down. Marlene! Lily drops to help her. Dorcas stands protectively in front of them both to give him enough time to stand, casting spells at a ruthless, lethal speed. Okay, I'm okay. The Marauder boys come face to face with Snape, Wilkes, Rosier Jr., and Mulsper Jr. A brief pause between the old classmates. Otter. Snivellus. Lily creeps around the side. How childish! You should forget to tell it! Snape is down instantly. The other Death Eaters die for cover. The Marauders unleash a torrent of spells. The Death Eaters fire back and it scatters the Marauders. Remus and Sirius dive in one direction. Most of her grimly cast spells to the face devoid of mercy. Peter locks eyes with Mulsiver. Mulsiver realizes who it is and sneers. Peter freezes, ears ringing. A flash of memory from his capture. Sirius screams, echoing in the other room. He's locked in until... Ow! James and Lily push his head down, saving him from another green curse bursting overhead. Dorcas and Marlene fire over their heads as James looks around. Sirius! Sirius stands stock still with Remus fighting nearby. Rabassin and Rodolphus, dueling Anna and Edgar nearby, see Regulus. Finish him! 
but then the wand shifts, moving subtly. Regulus points it towards the empty air over Sirius's shoulder. Just as the spell is cast, Remus's head moves into his view, backing directly into the way of the oncoming spell. No! Sirius desperately knocks Remus out of the way. The spell missing Remus is by mere millimeters. Regulus turns and takes off running. Sirius leaps after him, only to be thwarted by Rodolphus and Rabaski, who keep Sirius and Remus defending themselves under heavy spell fire while Regis disappears into the chaos. Edgar vanishes back into the fray. Emmeline! Bellatrix disarms Emmeline. Christia! <laughs> <laughs> Drunk and giddy on power, Bellatrix prepares to cast one final spell. Dorcas, Marlene, and Lily burst into frame. Dorcas crouches over Emily protectively, dragging her away from the battle, while Marlene and Lily scrap with Bellatrix. Although a close match, Bellatrix is still holding her own. Suddenly, McGonagall attacks from the side, pushing Bellatrix away from Lily and Dorcas. She casts a devastating spell she slams face first into the ground. She happens to spot Mulsiver. A manic grin lights up her face, and she scrambles to her feet, racing towards him. Her previous quarry already forgotten. In the chaos, Bellatrix begins to stalk Mulsiver Sr. Staying in his blind spot, she moves with purpose, eyes fixated as she maneuvers around pockets of combat towards her prey. Mulsiver Sr., meanwhile, is proving his position as a general of Voldemort. He casts horrible deadly curses with the next. Mulsiver fixes on Edgar Bone's next, the end of his wand glowing a deadly green. From off screen, a thorny vine shoots forward, narrowing Mulsiver's wand hand with a sharp yank, causing the killing curse to cast wide. Alice and Frank Longbottom launch into rapid wand fire like the dangerous orders they are. Most were cast around for backup, but all the Death Eaters are distracted with their own battles. Behind him, Bellatrix tries to speed up her movement, shoving people out of her way. Alice's vines entangle Molesworth to the point that he can't move. Silencio! Forcing her way around a dueling Death Eater, Bellatrix casts spells wildly, frantic and enraged. No! A Mata Kedavra! The blast of the twin spells rips the ornate mask away from his face. It lands at the feet of Bellatrix. The shock of his death ripples through the Death Eaters. Bellatrix bends down, picks up the mask. She locks eyes with the long bottom, advancing on them, all traces of humanity gone from her eyes. You was mine to kill mine! Behind her, Death Eaters are running, apparating away. Their leader is gone, and the battle is lost. Rabastin grips the pumpkin, trying not to trip. The Order pursues them, unwittingly leaving the Longbottom facing Bellatrix alone. I deserved it! I deserved to kill him! You took him from me! Both Frank and Alice cast curses in defense. She blocks both of them, raises her wand. <laughs> Rodolphus grabs Bellatrix around the middle, practically picking her up to drag her away from the battle. Kadara! Her last curse cast wide, speeding directly at Emmeline on the outskirts of the battle near the tree line. Anna leaps out of nowhere, knocking Emmeline to the ground and out of the way, landing on top of Emmeline in a protective crouch. A whirl of Rodolphus's magic, and they are gone, except for Bellatrix's screams still echoing through the trees. Anna looks down to check on Emmeline and finds her staring up. You all right? Yeah. I'm all right, just here. Anna pulls Emmeline to her feet. Emmeline staggers upright, settling her hands on Anna's waist. You saved me. Of course I did. Of course you did. Interior Malfoy Manor, day. The Death Eaters apparate into a study. Some collapse with injury or exhaustion. Voldemort enters the room. All the Death Eaters immediately straighten. He sees the mask in Bellatrix's hands. Recognition <gasps> that Mulsibur is dead. Pity. Bellatrix. Lucius. Bellatrix, give the mask to Lucius. I trust no one else at my side. Voldemort approaches Regulus. Regulus immediately drops to his knees before him. Young Black. He fought bravely for you, my lord. Even when confronted with the traitor within his own family. Hmm. You will be rewarded with my trust. 
Thank you, my lord. The first thing I shall need of you, the use of your house elf. Uh, of course, my lord. When? Soon. Voldemort touches his shoulder, a disturbingly familial gesture. I know you won't disappoint me. Voldemort moves past Regulus, aiming for the other Death Eaters in the back. Regulus remains in a kneeling posture. On my line. My lord. Exterior, forbidden forest, day. People wander around cleaning up from the battle, tend to the wounded, check in with one another. A general sense of cheer fills the space. McGonagall takes care of the injured, tending to a disgruntled Moody, healing whilst talking over her shoulder. Bring the wounded to the school infirmary straight away. Serious cases will be transported to St. Mungo's from there. Mr. Pruitt, if you so much as try to operate in your condition, I will give you detention. I do not care how old you are. Emmeline, camera in hand against all odds, is attempting unsuccessfully to arrange a group photograph. We ought to take a photo with the whole order while we're here. Who knows when we'll have the chance again? Later. He tries to stand. McGonagall shoves him back down. When later? Doesn't matter. It does matter. The long bottoms. Frank takes Alice's wand hand, bringing it up to his lips, kissing her palm affectionately. Are you all right, darling? Never better, my love. The moment is interrupted by Marauders and Company, who swarm the long bottoms in cheers, backslap, and party <laughs> hands. Oh, Gwen approaches Moody McGonagall. She hands Moody the satchel. Try not to lose it this time. The Ministry is not capable of keeping something like this safe. Gwen glances at McGonagall. Hogwarts could. She offers the satchel, and McGonagall takes it. Elvis wouldn't mind the chance to study it properly. Maybe we can make some good come of it. She nods to them both and leaves. Where do you off to next? There are other conveniently missing dark artifacts that Death Eaters could use against you, but not if I find them first. Gideon and Fabian appear, waving Gwen down. Come on, Gwen, one last night out before you abandon us again. No time to waste. Gwen nods to Moody as they pull her away. This is goodbye. Across the clearing, Anna, Emmeline, and Edgar chat. Emmeline has her arm around Anna. You'll be careful going home. Of course. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll look out for her. Now that the Auras have cursed to kill, we should be able to turn the tide in this war. We'll see you Friday. Edgar and Anna embrace. Breakfast at the Three Broomsticks. Have you seen yourself lately? Both Pruitts are blackened with smoke. Rosemato won't mind. I could use a drink. Puff. I have work. Emmeline slings an arm around her shoulders. You're out sick today, obviously. Anna smiles and they share a kiss. Come on, Gwen. Let us treat you to a meal before you leave. Just try not to get yourselves killed while I'm gone. Us? Never! The dead eaters won't stand a chance. Their conversation fades as the group walks out of the forest. Exterior, hillside, sunrise. James and Sirius sit on a hill overlooking Hogwarts, watching the sun start to come up, sharing a flask. Lily, Remus, and Peter join Sirius and James. Remus puts his arm around Sirius. Peter realizes they're a couple. On the hillside, Marlene and Dorcas come up the hill. Marlene sits next to Lily and they link arms, Dorcas on their other side.
Peter's thoughts are elsewhere. His mind is on Mulsiper and his worries for the future, uncertain of their victory. On the hillside, Dorcas lays her head on Marlene's shoulder. They clasp hands tightly. Dorcas kisses Marlene's hand. On the hillside, Lily, James, Sirius, Remus, and Peter are tired, battle-worn, but the love between them and gratitude of being alive is present. An owl flies overhead. I solemnly swear, swear, I solemnly swear, swear, swear I'm up to the good. Come on, you have to say it all at once. Give it another go. <laughs> <laughs> 